Hi, y'all. So today we are going to look at the recycle method on Laravel factory classes. Now, the recycle method is very useful because it basically ensures that a single instance of a model is recycled or reused for all of the relationships created by a related factory. So this means that you can use it any time that you need to use a factory, like for seeding your database or writing your tests. So let's jump in and see how it works. I have an application here where the idea is that we will create invoices and send them to companies. So there are three models. The first is company, and you can see that it has many invoices. So in this particular case, it's a one to many relationship. We have one company that can have many invoices. And if we take a look at the invoice model, we will see that the invoice belongs to the company, but then it has many line items. So once again, we see a one-to-many relationship here because one invoice will have many line items. And if we take a look at line items, we see that we have a belongs to relationship. So there's really nothing extraordinary about these models or their relationships. This is pretty much standard fare. But I have not implemented the factories. So let's jump in and do that. Now, as far as our company is concerned, we only have a name. Now, ideally, we would have a lot of other information about a company, but for the case of examples, this is going to be just fine. So we will set up a fake company name for the company, and that's going to be fine for that factory. Now, the invoice factory is where things start to get a little interesting because now we need to set up the relationship between the invoice and the company. So the invoice has a company ID foreign key, and we want to always have a company. Anytime that we create a new invoice, we need to have a company associated with that invoice, and we will use the factory there. So for a new invoice that has no company assigned, one will be created automatically. And we will essentially do the same thing for the line item factory. We have a foreign key for the invoice where we will use the invoice factory. But then we have a few other pieces of information here. We have a description for the line item. And once again, we will just use some fake text, but then we will also have an amount. Now, this is in currency, so we are going to have two decimal places. And then let's also set a minimum and a maximum value. So let's say that the minimum can be two, the maximum will be 5,000. And with our factories in place, now we can start using them in our tests. So let's hop on down to our test and let's start with a test that says that a company has one invoice. The idea being that we will create an invoice and we will be sure that the company associated with that invoice just has one invoice. Now, of course, we could do that very easily by just using the invoice factory, because anytime that we create a new invoice, it is going to have a company automatically created for it. It's just that to actually perform the test, it's going to look a little weird because we have to use our invoice and then we have to get to the associated company and then go back to the invoices so that we can count them and we want that to be one. Now, of course, we could do that a lot easier, which we will do here in a moment, but let's be sure that this test is going to pass. And sure enough, it does. So ideally, we would create our company first so that then we could set up the relationship between the company and the invoice. So let's start by creating that company. And then whenever we create the invoice, we could go ahead and set the company ID for the invoice is equal to the ID of our company. This is going to simplify the actual test so that we don't have to use the invoice to get to the company. Now we have the company. So we can run that test again, and that should pass as well. It does. But this is where the recycle method can be very useful because now we don't have to set up any kind of relationship using attributes. Instead, before we create our invoice, we can recycle this company. So we will use the recycle method here, pass in company. And so for 
every invoice we create with this one statement, it is going to use the company for each one of those invoices. So now if we run this test, we will see that it passes. But let's do this. Let's make it fail. Let's say that we want to create 10 invoices. And all of those 10 invoices will be related to the one company that we created. And in this case, it's going to fail because we have 10 invoices instead of one. Now let's write another test, one where the invoice total is 2276. Uh, now our invoice currently has no idea how much the total is. So we're going to have to implement this functionality, but we will start by creating an invoice. We don't necessarily need to actually explicitly create a company here because the company is irrelevant to this test. We definitely need an invoice. And then we will have our line items. And let's keep this simple and have just two line items. And as we create these line items, let's go ahead and specify the amounts. So the amount for the first one, uh, let's say that it's going to be 150. And then the amount for the second, that would be 2126. And then here we will call recycle because we want to recycle the invoice that we created. And then finally, we will create our line items. And then let's say that we expect that the invoice total will be 2276. So let's go to our invoice model and let's start implementing that attribute. Now let's start with a failing test and we will start with by simply returning zero. And if we run this, then of course, this should fail. We should have one passing and one failed. So great, that is expected. But let's implement this now so that we will return, uh, we'll use the line items and we want to reduce them to a single amount. So let's have a closure where we have our accumulator and each line item. And we will simply return the accumulator plus the items amount. But let's also initialize this whole thing with zero. So that makes sense to me. You're adding up all of the amounts and yeah, that should be fine. So let's run the test and we should see that both of those pass. Now there's another way that we can use the recycle method and that is by passing a collection of model instances. Let's take a look. So let's copy this test. And instead of testing the total, well, we're just going to be sure that the total is not zero. Because instead of creating just one invoice, we are going to create 10. And this is going to give us, of course, a collection of invoices that we can pass to the recycle method. Now, of course, this is going to change the behavior ever so slightly. Whenever we create a line item, it is still going to set up a relationship between that line item and an invoice, but it's going to pick an invoice at random. So when you pass a collection of model instances, it will pick one at random to set up the relationship with the line item in this particular case. But it's going to be a little bit different. Since we are creating two line items, that means it is going to pick two random invoices. So for each line item that we create, it is going to pick a random invoice to set up the relationship for that line item. That means that we can write something like this to where we will pick an invoice from our invoices where the first total is greater than zero. And then our expectation is of course going to change. We expect that the invoice total will not be zero. So remember, we have 10 invoices. And while it's possible that one invoice will have a total of 2276, chances are we're going to end up with two invoices that have one line item each. But it really doesn't matter which one that is, as long as an invoice is not zero. So we should have three tests, all three should pass. We see the proof there. So the recycle method is extremely useful. Use it anytime that you use factories to create instances of related models.